If you have enjoyed looking and listening to my books, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Two stories from The Garden Gang by Jane Fisher, Lucy Leek and Bertie Brussels Sprout. A Ladybird book, first published in 1979. Lucy Leek loved lava. She was never happier than when she was up to her elbows in bubbles. So she often washed clean things just for the pleasure of it. If it was a windy day, that was even better for Lucy Leek. There was always a chance that the washing line might break and then she could do all the washing again. The flapping of clothes on the washing line was music to her ears and the clean smell of washing was equally delightful to her. Sometimes her friends were rather embarrassed by her eagerness to wash their cardigans and scarves as soon as they had arrived. They often had to stay far longer than they intended until their clothes were dry enough to put on again. But matters came to a head when Mrs Blackberry sent her ten children with a basket of goodies for Lucy Leek. She'd been baking all that morning and had a few extra biscuits and cakes for Lucy, who was too busy washing to have time to bake or cook. Mrs Blackberry was a good cook and Lucy enjoyed her food. Mrs Blackberry cleaned her house all afternoon. And then she made tea for Mr Blackberry herself and the children. But the children did not arrive home. As it grew dusk, she became worried and hurried along to Lucy Leake's cottage. She hoped that she might meet them on the way. But there was no sign of her children. Mrs Blackberry ran up Lucy's path and knocked on the door. You can imagine her relief when the door opened... And there sat ten little blackberries, eating buns and waiting for their socks and scarves to dry. Of course, Lucy was sorry she'd kept them so long, but she said it'd been a poor drying day. One day, the garden gang were having a party in the village hall. The food was delicious and everyone was laughing and chattering happily. Suddenly... Lucy Leek appeared from nowhere and snatched each tablecloth from under the food and the crockery, splattering one or two of the guests with jelly and ice cream. Miss Delia Damson, president of the Women's Institute, was so shocked at what had happened that she decided to call a meeting to solve the Garden Gang's problem. This can't go on, she said. It's so embarrassing. Meanwhile, Lucy Leek skipped out joyfully with her new pile of dirty washing. Lucy Leek soon had those tablecloths in hot, bubbling water. She rubbed and scrubbed until the cloths were white. She pegged them on the washing line and waited for them to dry. And soon they were ready to iron, and in half an hour they were crisply ironed, folded and ready to be returned to the village hall. By the time Lucy had arrived back at the village hall, the garden gang had made some decisions on how to cope with Lucy's mad desire to wash clothes. Delia Damson told Lucy of their ideas, and she was delighted. She could hardly wait for the next day to arrive. When morning came, the garden gang were all very busy. Some were tidying Lucy's garden, cutting her grass and sowing seeds. Others were cleaning Lucy's house and they filled her larder with good things to eat. And in return, Lucy did all their washing. She could now be kept happy all day long. Bertie Brussels Sprout Bertie Brussels Sprout 
was a great athlete. His legs were so strong that he could easily jump from the path onto the compost heap. He did this every day to keep fit, or so he said. His favourite game was sliding down the cold frame top, especially on a frosty morning, but he also enjoyed skating on the frozen lily pond. Another one of his favourite hobbies was hurdling over the shoe scraper at the bottom of the garden, but sometimes there was mud on it. It caught on his running shorts and made him grubby. One morning as he was jogging down the garden, he saw a long metal object shining on the grass. Little did he know that it was a crochet hook dropped by Sally, the gardener's daughter, the day before. The very sight of it made his eyes gleam. He had visions of himself floating skillfully over the pea row. He decided now to add pole vaulting to his many talents. The garden gang watched him with delight and decided that it would be a good idea to hold an intergarden Olympic Games. They sent invitations to all the neighbouring gardens and everyone gladly accepted. The great event was to be held on the 4th of June and everyone hoped for fine weather because they wanted to take part, even if it was only to sell tickets. June the 4th arrived. It was a beautiful morning and the sport started with Barnaby Banana running into the garden, carrying a lighted match and placing it in an upturned plant pot. But somehow he managed to singe his hair. However, he grinned bravely at everyone as he took his place for the start of the games. The flowers sang a chorus from their favourite song, which was Raindrops Fall and We Grow Tall but they didn't get very far with it because they burst into giggles at the thought of Barnaby's singed hair. It's a good thing no one knew why they were laughing or poor Barnaby would have been very hurt. The first event was a swimming race. Roger Radish swam for the garden gang but only came in second because he'd eaten a huge breakfast that morning. Next came the gymnastics. Percival P and his grandchildren won a medal. Polly Pomegranate gave a brilliant performance in the dancing competition and came first. All the garden gang did very well. But the highlight of the day was the performance given by Bertie Brussels Sprout. He came first in the high jump, the long jump, the hundred metres race, the hurdles race, the marathon race and his newfound hobby of pole vaulting in which he jumped a terrific height. He went home very tired, but very happy. He slept that night with his gold medal under his pillow. <laughs>